Help me find an exit! Hello to all you goats out there, and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you Murder House by Puppet Combo. With a combination style of low poly PS1 graphics and the 80s slasher horror vibe, you're in for a treat with this little gem. But beware of fixed camera angles and tank controls if that's something you can't jive with. It's not the first game he's developed or published, and it's not the last. But it is the first to be released on Steam and consoles, and consequently, the first of the works I've played. I am wholly interested in getting into the rest, but for now, let's dive into Murder House. Starting with the prologue, we're put into the shoes of Justin, ready to take his picture with the Easter Bunny. The kid's a little hesitant, as anyone would be, prompting the photographer to hurry him along brusquely. Say cheese! After the scene, we wake up in a photo booth. Looks like we fell asleep long enough for the mall to close, leaving us all alone. Locked in. Wandering around the mall feels foreboding in itself. It's dark, empty, and quiet. Something, something, liminal spaces. Eventually, we find a half-closed gate that grants us access to another portion of the mall. As we walk, we can find several missing persons posters. Our current protagonist makes a comment about how many seem to be missing. It definitely adds to the unsettling feeling, seeing as some of these posters say they went missing in this very mall. Nearby, we'll find a key. It unfortunately won't unlock the front doors, but it will unlock another gate. Before we head on from this section, we can find the photography setup from earlier. As we approach the Easter Bunny's chair, the music will change from its melancholic mood to something altogether more... menacing. Hauling our behinds out of the area, we enter yet another section of the mall. Like the rest, everything is closed down and locked up. But we can find some display mannequins in a roped off square. Imagine being in a mall after closing hours all by yourself, barely any light, and seeing a group of naked mannequins. Would I be scared? Eh, probably not. But I'd definitely be a little bit unsettled. Further along, we'll finally find an exit door which leads us into an employees only corridor. We'll see a few copies of those missing persons posters in here, and further along, find that all the doors are locked, except the restroom. Look, I really don't need to go just yet, and, um, I, I don't use public restrooms, so... Instead, we head back out and down the corridor, where we'll come face to face with a sickle-wielding Easter Bunny. Our protagonist runs and hauls ass back down the hallway, screaming in fear while the bunny stalks behind us. Quickly, we run into the restroom from earlier and hide in the near stall. The Easter Bunny isn't far behind and we can hear the door open and subsequently be locked behind him as soon as we make it in. From here, we can duck down and watch his large, dirty rabbit feet clomp along the bathroom, searching for us. Waiting with bated breath as he checks the stall doors, we finally catch a break when we hear a door open and close, signaling it's safe to come out from hiding. Unfortunately, since he locked the door we came in from, we're gonna have to follow his direction and head through the second door on the other side. We'll be back in the corridor again, and to our left, there's a door with a keypad. Looks like we're gonna have to find that code. A few steps away is another door we can enter. In this area, that godforsaken audio will play again, not only amping up tension, but absolutely destroying your eardrums. That's one reason for not wanting to take your sweet time here. The other is... That. But we do need to grab a flashlight and a screwdriver in here. And if you're playing in dolly mode, well, let's just say I made little Justin run like he was three sheets to the wind, if you catch my drift. Still, the items aren't difficult to find, and we can find an exit near the TV. We've entered a locker room, and from here we can search the showers and put that screwdriver to use. In one of the drains, there's a key. And 
and this key can be used on a locker in this room. Inside will be empty, except for a code written on the inside of the door. And that's exactly what we needed. Now we can exit and run to the code lock door. Inside is an employee break room. And thankfully there's another person in here. The Easter Bunny's trying to kill me. I'll take care of him. You'll be safe here. I lock the door. Janitor Jack has locked us in while he goes to deal with the bunny man. We can peek through the office window to see nothing going on at the moment. But when we look away, we'll hear something and the lights get dimmer. Peeking out again, we can see the bunny walk by. He's turned the lights off in the break room. Back in away again, the power to this room shuts off. So there's only one thing we can do. Hide under the desk. Anxiously, we can hear footsteps getting closer. And closer. And then a door creaks open. Huh. For some reason, I thought he was gonna get- Now, we're in the present day, in the year 1988. We'll now be playing as Emma, an intern working for the Channel 9 News. She's come along with the team consisting of Dana the reporter, Tom the cameraman, and... You're lucky you have this after the incident with the poodle. Gary, with the goal of doing a news segment on the Easter River. They've already run into some trouble, though. The real estate agent was supposed to meet them there and let them into the house, but uh, he's not out there. His car is, however, so he's got to be around here somewhere. Still, Emma, being the intern, is tasked with finding a way into the house. The front door is a no-go, so we'll have to head around back. The back door is locked, too, but we can find a basement window to slip through. It's dark and dingy down here, and Emma's already commenting on good hiding places. Emma, why on earth would that be a thought in your head right now? Is everything alright? Being that most of the basement is too dark, we're gonna head upstairs. In the kitchen, we can see five doors that lead to various areas in the house, though one of them's missing a knob. We can also find a note here. It's from the missing real estate agent, Jerry. He mentions the basement window we were able to crawl through having been unlocked, and that whoever did it stole the fuse, which is why the power's out. But there's another fuse somewhere around here. It also says he left the front door open for the team and to shout for him when we arrive. Clearly, something fishy's going on. The house has been broken into and someone stole the fuse for the power, and Jerry is still nowhere to be found. Also, the door was locked when we got here. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Heading into the foyer, we can unlock the front door, allowing the rest of the team in. It's time to hustle. Grab all the equipment in the van and get it in there. We're gonna set up. Of course, since we're the intern, we're stuck with hauling the equipment into the house busted leg or not. We got another problem though. There's no power. Guess who's gonna have to take care of that? We'll turn it back on. I don't know how. Figure something out. Wow, this is a cool house. Shut up, Tom. I hate- Shut up, Dana. Heading upstairs, the first door to the left is unlocked. Emma. Emma, just stop. Is this all you think about? How everything would make a great hiding place? What are you hiding from, Emma? What are you hiding? We find a couple of locked drawers in here and a locked door, but nothing else of note. Down the hall, we can enter another room. And this one has a TV and a cabinet. There's something behind it, but we can't move it, so we move on. We can, however, find the fuse in a dresser here. So why don't we just go ahead and go put that fuse to use? Whenever we exit the door, we can see someone with red hair run down the hall. It seems to lead to the attic, but we can't get in there yet either. Honestly, about now is when I just leave. Screw the internship, screw Channel 9 News, and screw Dana. I don't need this. I don't want this. But Emma does. And we do as Emma do. 
Back in the basement, we can find the fuse box next to the washer and dryer. As soon as the power's back on, the dryer immediately starts up. Interacting with it reveals something inside, but the door's jammed for now. Great, another thing we can't get into. In any case, the power's back on, so everyone's ready to get to work. In this little news segment, we learn that the Easter Ripper was a man going by the name of Anthony Smith, and this was his home. Of his name sends shivers up the spines of parents across the country. Children seem to be his victims of choice. However, it seems he's passed away by the current year we're in. Some say his spirit still haunts the home till this day. After that little news segment, we're free to roam again. Heading back into the room upstairs, we can find Tom. I I, I think the stress is getting to her. Did you see that? See what? After a few words with Tom, who can turn on a dime. Damn, Tom, that's impressive. We can head back out and search for the rest of the crew. This is a great opportunity. Ugh, Gary. Put in a little extra effort, you can really get ahead. If you know what I mean. No, Gary. What do you mean? Gary tasks us with finding Dana, who isn't too far away in the basement. And a shield tasks us with getting her a glass of water. Talking. Can you fetch me a glass of water? We can take that mug that's been sitting on the table for who knows how long and get her some water from the tap. Here you go. Thank you. Wait, did you wash this? It's the little victories. Dana wants us to investigate the house. Real story in this house. Something that nobody has reported on. And maybe we can get hired on a real network. But before we can do that, it's time to get back to work. Let's get Gary, what the fuck are you doing? People want to see ghosts. We learned that the Easter Ripper's rampage started in 1979 and ended in 1985, when he was caught and summarily dealt with by the law. Bunny. A job meant to spread joy and cheer put him in the perfect position to abduct young children until his capture and execution in 1985. And out of the 11 victims, one, Randy Martinez, managed to escape. We also learned one of his methods of madness making his victims hunt Easter eggs. Well, he hunted them. Deadly Easter egg hunt. Two years later, many say he still haunts the home he grew up in. After performing that little ghost trick, Gary tells us to go pick up some pizzas. You know what? I'm fine with this task. Best thing you've had me do all day. But let's have one more look around before leaving. We should see what that key Dana gave us unlocks. Uh, nope. Nope. Not this. Definitely not this. Bingo, it's a key to the safe room. You're not gonna find any would-be wizards in here. At least, I don't think so. But you will find a flashlight, a pencil, and a save journal. All extremely useful things. Being that this game follows the style of those old school PS1 games, there is no autosave. You're gonna need to find pencils in order to be able to save your game. It may sound annoying, but it's a short game, and if you're thorough, you'll have more than enough pencils to finish out your playthrough. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. Now that we have the flashlight, we can head down into the basement and search the area for a crowbar. Finally, something we can use on the dry- Err. Once we pry open the dryer door, we'll find the missing doorknob. Finally making some progress. When we head back upstairs again, it seems it's gotten darker and night isn't far off. It's probably way past lunchtime, but uh, they're just gonna have to wait a little longer for those pizzas. We have a door to open. Inside seems to be a sitting room with a fireplace and a piano. Beside the fireplace, we can pick up a poker. Look, either this girl has some crazy intuition or she is quickly going insane. Both are just as likely in my opinion. There's also an Easter basket in here. Now, let's get the heck out of here. Well, uh, looks like that's not happening. Someone trashed the van. Took the tires off and all. I mean, I can walk. I don't have to drive, I can just walk. Whatever, 
Whatever, guess that's not an option. Whatever. Dude even left a cheeky little note. Looks like we're gonna be hunting eggs while he hunts us. It also looks like Tom's missing now. I don't know, I, I can't find him either. And Gary wants us to use the camera in his stead. So you're gonna have to hold the camera. This is Dana Turner on location. I've just been informed that we're stuck here. Someone has wrecked our van and we can't get our fucking pizza lunch promised by my producer. Look, I don't like pizza as much as the next scope, but I'd be far more concerned about the van being trashed in the moment. Just saying. I want my lunch. I can't work under these conditions. Anyway, let's go find Tom. Not because Gary told us to, but I mean, what else are we gonna do? After searching the house, we find Tom in the basement. Seems he's found a key and hands it over. I found a key, but I can't figure out what it opens. Let me see. I think it's pretty obvious what this key goes to. Or not. When we attempt to head to the second floor, we can hear a crash and something breaking. And we get a scene with Dana. Help me! There's somebody else in here! Uh, now is definitely a good time to run. We head straight for the attic and after a little fumbling, manage to use the key to unlock the door and get to safety. We can breathe now. The Easter Ripper won't follow us in here. Taking some time to calm our nerves, we can have a look around. Inside a set of drawers, we can find a letter opener. This works great for jimmying open those locked drawers. As for now, there's really nothing else, so we gotta get back to it. Attention all Kmart shoppers, the store is now closing. Once we're back on the second floor, we can see the gruesome aftermath of Dana's encounter with the Ripper. Her head has been propped up on the table, and it looks like there's something in her mouth. It's an egg. The death egg. This must be one of those eggs we're supposed to find. Not wanting to linger too long, it's now time to search the house for anything useful. And we should probably keep an eye out for Gary and Tom too, I guess. But don't forget, the Ripper is lurking around. You're gonna need to be vigilant lest you end up his next victim. The key is, when you hear him coming, run to the nearest hiding spot and wait for the coast to be clear. His footsteps are very audible, and a music cue will begin playing. So, you'll have a little warning beforehand. Moving on and searching those locked drawers in the room Dana ran out of earlier, we can find a pistol. It's a great find, but probably not as powerful as you think it'd be. We're working with slasher movie rules here. It's gonna take more than a couple shots to deal with the Easter Ripper. So it's still a better idea to just avoid them altogether. Heading downstairs, we can find a hole in the floor in the living room. There's something in there, but we need something else to get it. Let's go check out the basement again. There's a locked drawer in here, and if we use the letter opener on it, it reveals a magnet. This is just what we need to retrieve that item. Turns out, it's a key. <laughs> Who would have guessed? But at least we can unlock one of the doors upstairs. Once we're inside, Gary will show up. He's dead. Help me find an exit. Much to his misfortune. While Gary's being butchered, Emma hides under the bed. It seemed to be the right move, as the Easter Ripper will leave afterwards. And now that we're not in imminent danger, we can look around the room. Under the mattress is a black light we can take. And a note to read. The big bunny watches us. Its big black eyes follow me when I move. It always watches. At night, we hear noises coming from the walls. The first time I heard them, I got happy because I thought it was you and mommy shouting for me, coming to save me. But it wasn't. When the shouting starts, the others cover their ears, but I try and listen. I put my head against the wall and hold my breath, but no matter how hard I try, I can't understand what they're saying. They shout and cry a lot. It isn't mommy, and it isn't you, but it sounds like adults, and they sound sad. Really sad. Did the Easter Bunny take them too? As far as we know, the Easter Ripper didn't go after adults. In any case, we need to go find a use for that black light.
The only place that currently has a working light is in the attic. Replacing the regular light with the black light shows a glowing substance around the cabinet up here. Normally, you'd need luminol to get blood to glow under a black light, but I mean, it's not really important in this case. Moving the cabinet aside, we can see the substance everywhere. And we found a dumb waiter. Using it will lower us down into a part of the basement we haven't been in yet. There are Easter paintings on the walls and, um, uh... Inside the drawer at the end of the hall, we can find more pistol ammo. Checking the rooms, we find something even more disturbing. Me too, Emma. We can find a rope in one of these rooms, and a couple notes scattered around. The blonde girl's gone. Gracie won't stop staring at the big bunny on the wall. Randy says the chocolate eggs make us sleepy. Not gonna eat tonight. Randy told me to memorize this song. I don't know what he means. I wrote it down. And the letter ends with a string of numbers. This note mentions Randy. Dana reported that Randy Martinez was the sole survivor of the ordeal. This is probably the same Randy mentioned in the note. It seems he was pretty keen and observant, which is probably what helped him survive. The next letter reads, He visited again. No one saw him, but we woke up and there was a big basket of eggs. I was so hungry I nearly forgot to take the wrapping off. We all took big bites, but the blonde girl, when she took her bite, her mouth was covered in blood. She dropped the egg and inside the chocolate, the Easter Bunny had played a trick and put sharp razor blades. There was a lot of blood and she wouldn't stop screaming and the walls started to laugh at her. I think we can all agree this guy is a sicko. Leaving this disgusting place, we can find the camera upstairs in the kitchen. There's a tape still in it, which might be able to show us what happened to Tom. As we exit the kitchen, we can see the area bathed in a red light. Great. Just great. That doesn't make me anxious at all. The doors are stuck shut, leaving us no choice but to move towards the hallway upstairs. Y'all, I don't think Emma's okay. But at least now, we can open those doors again. Now, let's go into the TV room. We got a tape to watch. Hello, hello? Is anyone there? Anyone there? <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Come out, come out. <laughs> Looks like the Easter Ripper got Tom too and hid something in the piano. Oh shit, definitely heard something. Time to hide. Now that the coast is clear, we can put that rope to use and pull the cabinet out of the way, revealing a hole in the wall. Looks like it led us to a bathroom. And here we can find another pencil, some bandages, and... Jerry, the real estate agent. He too has an egg in his mouth. That makes two eggs we found. Two more eggs to go. Heading back to the room Gary met his end in, we can find his body is now hanging from the ceiling. And he, too, is holding an egg. This one has the tarot of the hanged man. Ah ha ha ha, so punny. That's one more egg to find. And I think it's about time we go check out that piano. The cover is locked, but think back to that string of numbers we saw in the note earlier. Simply hitting the key that corresponds to those numbers in order will do the trick and unlock the piano and reveal the last egg. Now that we have all four, we can place them in the basket. Placing them in the basket doesn't seem like it's done anything, but it has, I assure you. Even though none of us want to, we should head back down to the torture dungeon in the basement. The one locked door is now open for us and it has a corridor that leads to a ladder. And that ladder leads us to the greenhouse. You know, it's actually a pretty nice greenhouse, but uh, now's probably not the time to admire the plants. There's something far more useful to us in here. A shotgun. Checking the door, it's still locked. However, when we move to check the opposite door... <gasps> Tim? Tom? Tam? Tom? Tom's? Mama's boy, Tom! My god. This is a cool house. Where's Tom? I'll catch you later. It was you. Anthony wasn't the Easter Ripper. I was. He turned himself in to save me. 
I thought I could control the urge to kill, but it's back. And now, I'm going to kill you! So I started blasting. After hitting him enough times, Tom, the Easter Ripper, will fall to the ground. Alright, let's get the hell out of here. Or maybe not. Should've double tapped, Emma. Always double tap. You can't kill me. I'm the Easter Ripper! It's fine though. Before we have round two with Tom, the ground begins to shake and... Well, that certainly was an ending. Or was it? It's not. Cut. Brilliant. Congratulations, guys. That's a wrap. The whole thing has apparently been fake. A movie. And we were the actress. Talking to the director, we found out that the ending wasn't the one exactly planned. Some guy named Nick was the original guy wearing the costume. But he skipped out a couple days ago, so Tom had to take the role. He's not even tall enough to be the killer. One more mention about this guy is gotten from talking to Emily. Seems he was kind of a weird guy. Maybe got a little too into his role. He was a weirdo. He didn't say anything to me the whole shoot. We could find Gary, or I guess rather Dan, in the trailer in the backyard. While he laments his pizza overdose, Sarah, aka Emma, mentions that stuff happened to people here. You know people really got killed in this house. Though Dan merely waves it off as a rumor. We can check the basement for the worst jump scare in the game. And also, uh, when, when, when did you get a twin, Sarah? Thank you. It took me so long to pose them. Aside from that bull miss, there was a reason to come down here. Sarah's car keys. Back upstairs, it seems the rap party's in full swing, and we can mingle with the crowd and show off our dance moves. But soon, it's time to leave. That's the end of Murder House. So the whole thing up to the director yelling cut was part of a schlocky B-horror movie. But was this movie inspired by true events? We know many a movie that claim they're based on real events to make it seem more interesting or drum up some press for it while not really portraying what real events they're claiming to. Is that what's going on here? Or is this just an original idea they wanted to film in a house that is rumored to have had people, uh, meet their end? In the last scene of the game, we see someone in the Easter Ripper costume hiding in Sarah's trunk. Is this Nick, the actor that was playing the antagonist before he skipped town a couple days ago? Did he get a little too into method acting? Or is this someone else? Maybe Nick didn't skip town. Maybe someone got to him and took his costume in order to become their very own version of the Ripper. I've seen some say Sarah had something to do with it, and eh, perhaps she did. Maybe she's the reason Nick disappeared. Maybe that's just his body in the trunk. But I'm not so sure. You can see the Easter Ripper is still holding his weapon of choice. I believe this indicates whoever's in the costume is alive. That also covers the other theory that maybe it's just the costume with no one inside. There is definitely someone inside. You can see their arms. If you check the costumes in the house, you can see the arms end a bit below the elbow. Those hairy arms aren't part of the costume. I also believe I saw some say it was Tom, the actual real Ripper. If there ever was an actual real Ripper, who can say? So what did you think? Was this movie based off of true events? Who was the Easter Ripper hiding in Sarah's trunk? Did Sarah herself have anything to do with it? 
And what'd you think of that ending? Both the main game ending and the epilogue ending. In any case, I would recommend this game. It's pretty fun for a short little horror game. But anyway, thank you for watching. You are all goats to me. And I heckin' appreciate ya. I know this video isn't uh, as long or as in-depth as some of my others, but you know, I wanted to do a video on this game because it hit me in the nostalgia for old horror movie schlock, the days of VHS and the good old PS1. If you enjoyed it, I wouldn't be opposed to doing more games like this, whether that be individually or as one long video. Maybe a special or something for Halloween? We'll see. Also, I want to say thank you guys so, so much. I was excited to have 50 subscribers and suddenly it's over 1500. I mean, that's still a relatively small number, but to me, that is huge. I really hope I can step up my game and be worthy of the attention. Anyway, that's enough of my rambling and I'll see you next time on the Midnight Goat.